we're, we're yes. recording now. Yes, that's true. Okay, then. <clears throat> so, okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Carlos Morales, and I am a vice chair of the HEADS organization. <clears throat> and of course, you hear my voice, but you see Jubelki's face. So, you know, that's there you go. Um, and as you know, uh, we are going through the, uh, maybe like many of you are, going through the emergency with COVID-19. Uh, so thank you for being here this morning with, with everything that you are uh, managing at this moment. So my role is only to introduce um, Dr. David Pierce for the session this morning. And um, it will be on uh, improving student success in accelerating course offerings. Uh, with, with that said, I'm going to just uh, hand it over to David, he, who's next to me. And then we can take it from there. Jubelki, did I miss anything before? Not hearing you. Microphone. I cannot hear you. Jubelkis. Jubelkis, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> yes. So sorry. No, I just say thank you. <laughs> thank you for the time. Thank you for this opportunity for your leadership, uh, Carlos, as our, our vice chair, uh, vice chair of the board of directors, and also to David for his presentation. We truly appreciate this effort, and we hope that I'm praying to God that the, we can pass this crisis as soon as the last possible, and everybody keeps safe on their homes, and we will try to continue serving you using these kind of tools. So please stay tuned to our website and to our social accounts to join us every time we can uh, coordinate these kind of events. So thank you so much, and go ahead. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna just hand it over to, to Dr. Pierce here. I uh, may come back uh, for closing, but uh, the last 15, 10 minutes will be for questions. If not, it's because another meeting has popped up in my calendar. You know, we are uh, you know working 90 to nothing. So Dr. Pierce, take it away. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I am so glad to be here with us today. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, success in our in our online accelerated classes uh, and also accelerated classes just in general uh, for a little bit of information is that I just defended my dissertation uh, in thank you and in, in November that had to do with thank you very much which uh, had to do with accelerated programs and success rates. So, um, so sorry, you guys get to hear some of those statistics that I found out, um, unless you just want to like buy my dissertation later on. But um, uh, we'll we'll put a tag in there for a little bit for a little bit later. Okay. So let's talk about um, accelerated close classes and what we have done. That's your clock. That's my clock. Okay. With accelerated classes and what we have done. Thank you very much. Okay. So. All right, now just slide down here. On the, or you can click right there. Click right there for the next no. one. All right, so we are going to improve student success in the accelerated course offerings. And uh, next slide. Okay, so here's some background information so you can understand why this was even important for us. Um, approximately 37.7% of students in the United States complete their associate's degree in six years or less. In Texas, we have our public two-year colleges um, that have 732,000 students and only 33.5% of these people finish their associate's degree. So the question that really got me into my whole dissertation study was, we're doing very well at recruiting. We're doing really well about bringing the students into the classroom. We're getting them in, but they're not finishing. And why are they not finishing? Uh, and that was kind of a, the issue, the background of the dissertation was why are these people coming in, entering in school and not finishing? Uh, so that was, uh, that was the start of what I was trying to do there. Uh, 
There are so many reasons that could be that obviously it would be nearly impossible to figure out all the reasons. There are many things that are intrinsic, like I wanted to just learn just this, or I can't do this, or math is always my, my bad subject. It's also extrinsic. Uh, my personal stories, it took me 14 years to get my two-year associate degree because I had kids and a wife, and I had to pay bills, and I had to work, and, and it was very hard to work and go to school full-time. So it took me 14 years to get my two-year degree. Of course, after that, it, it came pretty good pretty fast after that. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons why people don't complete their degree. Part of it could also be the courses take too long, they get too bored. Um, I don't really want to spend that long doing it. Just tell me what I need to know. Let me walk away. So my study really got into try to find a methodology and a, and a modality that could offer the greatest success. In other words, people would be in the class, stay in the class, and be successful in there. Why is it important? Well, the state of Texas decided they were going to, uh, yeah, that is the reality of the non-traditional students that we're seeking. Uh, the, the state of Texas requested that 60% of Texans will have a certificate or degree uh, by, by 2030. Uh, if 60% of them have it, but only 33% are graduating, obviously we have a problem here. We do have an increase in technology that comes every day, increased forms of education delivery. Uh, but one of the major challenges we've had is the, the course length. Why do we have course length set at the length that we currently have them set for? So the question comes in to be, how long should a class be? So this was one of the background uh, studies that I did within, within my study was, who made up the decision that classes are supposed to be 15 or 16 weeks long? And I could not find any definitive proof anywhere that anybody said, this is the perfect way that we should do this. 15 weeks, 16 weeks should be perfect. Now, colleges I've worked for in the past, and I've been in higher education for 27 years. So colleges I've worked for in the past, some of them have 15 weeks, some of them have 16 weeks, some of them have 15 in the fall, and then 16 in the spring because of spring break, or 10 weeks, or, or what is actually a good a good time. And the best I could find was that there was the Carnegie, Carnegie system that got together and said, here's what we are going to define as a credit hour. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So the question is, are there any literature that is supposed to support this benefit? Why are we going 15 or 16 weeks? There were people who said, oh, it was set because of agriculture. Um, and actually, that's not true because it doesn't really go within the planting seasons. Um, is there any literature that says these lengths are going to be great? And our question that really comes down to the bottom line here, does course length even matter? Uh, is that what we're doing? Is Are we counting seat time? Are we trying to count how long these people are sitting in the classroom raising their hands? Or, or is it objective-based? Or is it learning-based? So that's a really good question is, does course length even matter to us? So our current course length, we have different lengths, we have different methods, we have a competency base. Now, I, I kind of laugh because in my presentation it was great. At TCC, Tarrant County College in Fort Worth, we offer classes in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen week sessions. Okay, which one do you want? Um, is there a difference? Is there, yeah, that's exactly what I said. It's like, are you serious? Uh, um, and everyone has a reason for why they're doing it and, they're, and a justification for why they're doing it. But realistically, is there any difference between a seven-week and an eight-week course? Is there any difference between a five and an eight? So, so basically, we have these different course lengths that are linked to uh, what makes everybody feel better. We're trying to be everything for everybody. And um, we have online, we have hybrid, we have blended, we have face-to-face. -face. Now, just to, so we're on the same page with our definitions. Um, online is basically less than 15% face-to-face. Um, hybrid is listed as 15 to 50% face-to-face. Blended is 50 
to 85% face-to-face, and face-to-face is 85% or more. Uh, so those are those are the definitions that were given to us by the state of Texas. And a lot of it is competency-based education also, when you learn a certain thing. And again, the question comes down to, if I've learned all this material in three weeks, do I have to stay for 16? And again, that goes back to that whole discussion there of is course length really important? Uh, so here's our next part. The Carnegie Credit Hour System said, the credit hour in higher education should be one hour of faculty instruction and two hours of homework on a weekly basis over a 15 week period. So that's kind of their decision that they made uh, way back in the early 1900s, that that's what it should be. Um, Georgi uh, Lozanov and, uh, developed a, a theory which is called suggestology in 1978. And the, his term has also been called super learning, accelerated learning, suggestive, um, accelerative learning, teaching. The importance of the research said, let's stop mechanizing this thing and make it more of a human learning process where the whole body, whole mind, whole person experience is learning the material. So he suggested that it's not set on a certain time frame. It's not set on a, uh, you have to have this many minutes in a seat. It says that this is when you are going to learn your objectives. So that was to the Carnegie system there. And again, the 15 weeks seems to be from everything that I could find, and, I, and I'd like to think I did pretty good research on it. I could not find any official term from back in the, early 1900s that said, this is the way we're doing it because it's the most perfect way to do it. It was more of a meeting that got together and said, here we go, let's just go ahead and put this together and let's do 15 weeks. So, so we started saying, let's offer accelerated classes. So a thought among academic scholars is, if we do it too fast, the intense classes could be less uh, effective, could be less, uh, you're not going to remember as much stuff, you're not going to apply the stuff as much as a full course, we're going to give you the stuff too fast for you to be able to, to understand it, remember it, but research has shown that basically an accelerated class is equal or superior to a regular length course, okay, so that's good. Uh, in the studies, we found that, that students and faculty really did like the accelerated approach more uh, as important aspect is the retention of the students. They felt engaged, they felt that they were in there, and they felt more face-to-face -face with, oh my God, there was a hand raised. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I will try to catch that. I don't see that over here. Okay. I will try to answer questions at the end because I don't see where the hands are, but that's okay. Um, so the another important aspect, retention rate. Accelerated classes, traditional course length. Research is showing that students accelerated in accelerated classes are less likely to disenroll than those in common courses. <laughs> So we have at Tarrant County College something that's called mini-mesters. And the mini-mesters are in-between semester classes, and we offer those after the fall has completed, before the spring begins. And they're offered in three-week or four-week sessions, and they have a very, very high success rate. In May, we also offer another one when our spring semester is over and before our summer session begins. So no other classes are going on except for these mini master classes. These classes being delivered, and this is core curriculum courses, in a, in a three week or four week period have greater than 90%. And so our question is, why? Why do these classes have such a great, great success rate? And part of this has to do with, uh, again, this is not all set down with data, but we are a community college and many university students come and take our classes during the mini-mesters. They do them here because they're fast, they're cheaper. In case you don't know, we charge $64 a credit hour. So this is a lot different than University of Texas that's charging $500 a credit hour. So they would rather come and do an English with us or a government course with us because it's tremendously cheaper to do this. So 
we uh, so we have a lot of university students, but one of the major things is is that the students are taking only one class at a time. That's all they're allowed to take. They cannot enroll in two. They cannot enroll in more than that. They can only take one course at a time. So there was a decision that was made that said, well, if that is so great and we're having a 90 percent rate, let's see if we can change this and do a monthly start class all the way across the board every month. So they said, we're going to design it so people take one course a month, 100% online, 20 months to get an associate's degree. We have a predetermined course sequence you're going to be in. We have pre-enrollment to know where you're going to be at. We know what courses you're taking next. You already know three months, four months, six months in advance exactly what courses you're taking. It's a perfect plan, right? That's one of those um, lead then to tell you, no. Uh, this was designed to be the perfect plan because it's working so good in May semester. It's working so good in, in winter semester. It should work all year long. And then we decided to offer it. No advisement, open enrollment, and only core curriculum courses. So we did your English, history, math, government, speech, we did all the core courses that you need in there. Uh, nothing that was uh, medical, nothing that was science-based, nothing that was intense hands-on courses. These were all core curriculum for them to do in a three-week period, or uh, I'm sorry, four-week classes. The first semester we offered this in spring of 2018, 59.9% success rate, 14.5% withdrawal. In the fall, 62.1% success rate, 15% withdrawal rate, and our enrollment went down. So we compared this to our to our mini masters and asked the question, why is this happening? This, this shouldn't be right. Why do we have this high failure rate? Why do we have this high withdrawal rate? So because I'm always a person who looks for the answer. I'm the kind of person who comes into the meeting and I'm trying to look for the solutions. I'm not going to bring you the problems. I'm going to bring you some possible solutions. That, that's the way that I work. And so my thought was, these people don't know what they're getting themselves into. They are just looking for a class. They went into the registration screen and they said, oh, look, here's a class. I think I'll join into that. Not realizing that the class is four times as fast as normal class. So, uh, so what we decided to do was we would now close the enrollment on this so that everyone would have to be advised. Uh, yeah, one a quick fix. Hang on, I'll, I'll come back to fixes. So we said open enrollment was disallowed. Every student was going to be advised. You needed granted permission for enrollment and you must be TSI compliant. So let me explain TSI compliant. In the state of Texas, they have the initiative that says in order to be college ready, you have to take a placement test and the placement test says that you are college ready in reading, writing, and math, those three areas. If you are not college level competent or uh, compliant in one of those three areas, then you must take a developmental course until you are up to that level. And with our open enrollment system before, they were allowed to get in there and join in these classes. Now you must be TSI compliant in all areas. Now you must, uh, be uh, granted permission to be able to enroll in the class. And what happened was, is yes, I want you to know that I did receive thousands of phone calls because the fact that we did it by phone and because it's uh, basically a one person show, we had 30 classes that we were offering at, uh, for during the semester and each had a capacity of 30 students. That means there was 900 seats. But the, that doesn't mean 900 phone calls, because as soon as one seat opened up, then another 20 people called. So yes, there were thousands and thousands of phone calls that I took to be able to do this, to get this set up. And basically, you called me and I said, hi, 
do you know what you're getting yourself into here? Are you sure you know what you're getting yourself into? This is a highly accelerated class. What you normally do in 16 weeks, you're going to be doing in four weeks, four times as fast as normal. Are you ready for that? If you're not ready for that, then that's fine. But the question is, is that I did not restrict anybody. I just warned them. I said, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I had many people that said, oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I didn't catch that. I'm not sure. And others who said, yeah, I can do that. And we made sure that they were only one class per month signed up for. Well, the question then is, after two semesters of doing that, did it make any difference? And here's what we found out. In the spring of 2019, the first semester that we did this, we had a 79.1% success rate with a 6% withdrawal. In the fall, we had a 72.2% success rate, 9.9% .9 withdrawal, but notice our enrollment even went up that time. So how is this compared to what we were doing with the two semesters before that? And here's what you're gonna find that our enrollment from spring to spring comparison went a little bit down, but that's probably because we told them what they were doing. They were not just opening enrollment. Our success rate went from 59 to 79. Our withdrawal rate dropped from 14 to six. On our fall to fall comparison, our total enrollments again increased there. Our success rate went from 62 to 72. Our withdrawal rate went from 15 to nine, uh, 9.9. .9. So, uh, so there's your semester to semester comparisons. Uh, on a year to year comparison, here's what it looked like year to year. From 2018, we went from 2018 uh 60.9 to 75.2 we went from the overall withdrawal rate of 14.7 to 8 and our total enrollment actually increased so we have an increase in success rate we have an increase in a uh, decrease in uh, withdrawals so i think that the logical conclusion is the intensity of accelerated monthly start class is is expressed to the student. They understand what they're getting themselves into. They agree to be abused in this form of method. And we can apply this to so many other of our advising of students, especially in degree planning and especially in pathways. Do you know what you need to take? Are you sure you need to know where you're going? Are you sure what's happening next? And you know what you're going to be doing. So logical conclusion. So then the answer says, is that, it, it, is that the answer? Well, no, I've only been talking to you for 20 minutes. I can't let you have the answer that quickly. So, so let me kind of explain a little bit more about more detailed within the answer here. So in order to be successful, you got to have the right faculty, you have to have the right students, and you got to have administration of the program. With our faculty, we're looking at, are you trained in accelerated delivery methods? Because there would be some instructors who says, if I just talk faster, I can deliver my lecture faster. Well, that doesn't mean the students are listening that fast. So you have to be trained in your accelerated delivery methods. You understand the best way of getting this information, the best way of breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. You need to have classroom experience. And I really stress this because you need to know how to answer the questions. You need to know how to interact with the students. You need to know how to, uh, to put groups together, um, and you also need online experience. And I've always laughed about the online instructor. Uh, yeah, learn by doing. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, a lot of people will say with an online class, here's your book, read it, uh, take your test at the end of the semester. Um, that really is not an effective method of teaching. Uh, you become more like the, uh, the deliverer of, of postage. You know, you're, you're sending mail to their mailbox and hoping that they are reading it. Uh, experience with summer classes helps because those are typically shorter classes. So we really like your faculty to know what they're doing, to have experience with the online, have experience in the classroom, and ex experience and success with delivery methods. 
Yeah, uh, very important to student academic success. <laughs> Students, now here's one of the major things that I think that, uh, that, that needs to be stressed. This is not a program for everybody. There are many students who cannot do an accelerated class. Many of my students who I've told um, can do very, very successful in my classes will not take a math in an accelerated class because they need to be, hey, slow down. That's, that's, that's too much for me. So I usually suggest if they're a little bit weak in math, make it a 16-week course. Go for the whole semester. D don't try to rush through it. But if you're a good reader, you're going to do good in a history class. If you're a good writer, you're going to do good in an English class. Uh, so we have to figure out exactly um, what classes you're going to take and what you're suitable for and, and understand it's not for everybody. Everybody cannot be in this accelerated programs, accelerated online programs and be successful with it. The, the students do need to be college ready. In my experience de dealing with non-traditional students, we have a lot of students who've been out of college or never started college for the past 10 years. They've been out. They've been joining the workforce. They have a family. They have a job. Um, I don't have time for clubs. I'm not going to football games. I don't have time for that. I'm here to get my education. And so they need to be college ready. And that might mean taking less classes at a time, taking two eight-week classes, taking one eight-week class before they even think about getting into a four-week class. So they need to be college ready. They need to be self-motivated. They need to understand there's a reason that they're doing this. They're not doing it because they are being forced to do this. I always laugh about mine when I just a personal story. I, I told you it took me 14 years to get my two-year degree. And I'm a veteran, so uh, I, I had veterans benefits and I was going to school and I was taking classes that really kind of that I wanted to that I wanted to enjoy and I was doing really good. So I was a really old guy. I must have been about 30, I think. And I'm walking down the hallways at the college and this uh, counselor came by and she said, uh, Mr. Pierce, and I said, how do you know me? I, I, I'm a veteran. I do things on my own. I don't ask for help. I don't ask for advising help. I just do things. And she said, well, I was looking through your degree plan here. And I know you have 99 credit hours. And I said, okay. She said, well, you only need 68 at that time, 68 to get an associate degree. I said, okay, give me my associate degree. She said, well, no, you can't because you haven't taken history. I said, I don't want to take history. She said, well, you have to take history in order to do it. I said, I don't want to can't make me. I don't want to take history. And she said, you have to take history if you're going to get your degree. So go take history so you can get your degree. Okay. All right. All right, all right. So this is kind of that self-motivation that, that I had to take my history class, not because I really enjoyed history or really thought anything about history, but because I knew I needed it to get my degree. So it was going to be a moment. And again, as I, as I mentioned, two years later, I had the bachelor's, year and a half later, I had the master's. So it, it just kind of all fell into place, but I had to get that first associate degree out of the way with all of those required core courses. Students should know how to use a computer. They should be really, really good. Uh, about their computers. They should know how to uh, upload documents, how to type, how to find things on the web. So they should know. So students need to be very, very successful also. You really need to have somebody that's going to be in charge of the program. And, and those of us that are in administration, that are in um, higher education, how many phone calls have you received that said, I've talked to 35 people already and no one knows the answer to this? They keep telling me that they refer me to this person who says, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, that's not my department. Talk to this person who says, oh, I'm really sorry, that's not my department. Talk to this person. And they get shuffled around to the point where they finally just hang up the phone and give it up. So if you're going to have successful accelerated programs, they need to know who to call and who's going to solve the problem for them. So the reality of it is I get paid as a director, advisor, counselor, problem solver, administrator, and sometimes janitor when I'm cleaning up my own desk. So it's one of those that 
that we are going to do everything we need to do, but every one of the students know they can send me an email and I'm going to answer it. They can place a phone call, I'm going to return the phone call. So you have to have someone who's going to be the face of the program, someone who's going to be there and be responsible and take care of it. You need to aggressively advise the students like that lady did for me back in back in the early 90s when she said, you have to take that history class. I don't want to. Well, you have to take that history class. Okay, great, great. So you have to keep them on track. You have to push them forward. You have to let them know where they are. But most important thing, and this is one of the things I, I usually do with my weekend college, which is an accelerated hybrid class. We're not really talking about that. But what I do with my weekend college students is that if you walk into most colleges in the United States and you ask the classroom, hey, when are you graduating? Most of them will say, well, kind of depends on when the classes come up, if there's any seats open, if I can get off that time of work, if I have a babysitter, I don't know. When you walk into a weekend college class and talk to one of my students, they will say, here's what I'm taking this semester, here's what I'm taking next semester, and I graduate May 9th of 2020. That's exactly what I want every one of our students to do. They need to know that this is their graduation date. They need to see the path that they're taking. They need to know when they're going to graduate and get done. And that keeps them on track, and that keeps them successful within the programs. So frequent degree audits to figure out uh, not let them wander off into, hey, I thought about taking this uh, criminal justice class just because um, the, the crime shows on TV really got me interested. No, 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 get back here. Take your English class, okay? So we need to keep them on track so that they know what they're doing and where they're going. <laughs> So we need all three of these things to be successful. We need our, our teachers to be uh, trained in accelerated delivery methods. We need our students to be screened before placement. And we need someone who's going to be in charge of the program and keep people in focus. Uh, another thing that I do is almost all of my instructors are adjuncts. And I have been an adjunct before. And sometimes an adjunct can't find a marker or doesn't know where to find a file. And, and they teach nights, weekends, middle of the night, and there's no one to talk to. There's no one there to help them. So I'm also there for my faculty members to say, oh, here's where this is. Oh, here's how you can find this. Oh, don't forget that this week is census state. Don't forget you have to make sure that you take your role this week and, and do your census report. Don't forget that this is the last day for W's, uh, for withdrawals. And so I, I keep them on track also. So again, that's kind of that administrative thing that you're doing there. Because I'm taking care of the students and the faculty, and this is making more successful classes. All right, you didn't think you were going to get away without hearing something about the dissertation. Sorry, that's the way it goes. So my dissertation was actually... Uh, studying English 1301, and English 1301 was the class that is required of every associate's degree in the state of Texas. Um, we have two gatekeeper courses that we have in our, in our associate degree. It's English and math. Now, math has a lot of different flavors to it. None of them taste good, but they have a lot of different flavors. Algebra, statistic, contemporary math, uh, calculus, whatever. There's a lot of different math, and they have to have a math course, but there's no common finding. The only course that every degree had in for the social degree is English Composition 1. So I said, let's find out what our success rates are for this class, English Composition 1, that's offered in every one of those sessions. We did the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, we did all of them. And then we also compared the online face-to-face -face and hybrid methods to see if we could find out which one offered the most success in these courses. So that was basically my dissertation study was the effect on the success rates. What I found was, our, my first research question, is there a relationship between the modality of lecture delivery yeah, hang on, we're coming. Okay. Is there a relationship between the modality of lecture delivery and the student success rates? And what we found out is there's not. There's not. They had just slightly, slightly better success rates um, with a face-to-face -face class, but they were minimal, minimal, like less than 5%, less than, less than anything of a difference between face-to-face. -face, and it kind of went in this order. 
face-to-face -face had the highest success retention rate, followed by hybrid, followed by online. A and again, you can kind of go back and reflect that too. Uh, is that the engagement with the instructor? Where the online, sometimes they leave them alone and say, here, learn this on your own. I, I don't know. We didn't go that deep into it at, because the statistics were not significant enough to show that, that it was important. Uh, we, we could not show that there was significant enough of a difference to go deeper into that, uh, into that detail. So we, we went on research question number two that said, is there a relationship between class duration and student success in the class? And yes, we found a significant difference, almost twice as much success and almost twice as much retention in an eight week class compared to a six week class. And I said, wow, that is really, really amazing. The difference in there between the duration of the class. Now, again, we could go in and find out, is it because the student got bored and left? Is it because they realized that 16 weeks was just way too long? They found a job. You know, we're in the society now that I want things now. I want it yesterday. I don't want, what do you mean I have to wait online five minutes for an update on my computer? What are you talking about here? Um, I need this instant gratification going on here. And so people maybe, are, are not willing to wait that 16 weeks. Now, if you count for, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm an old guy here, but if you remember those days that we went to class 15 or 16 weeks, three days a week, sitting in the classroom for an hour for that session, and then Tuesday, Thursday, we had other classes, so we went there for an hour and a half each day for 16 week periods. We never heard of, I never heard of accelerated classes uh, before that, they were all 16 weeks. Realistically, this is why it took me 14 years to get my degree. You think I have 16 weeks to sit there? I have a family to feed. So how am I going to take care of all this? So our completion rates were higher. Our um, success rates were higher. Uh, and I thought it was remarkable because I was looking for success rates. But as a side note, I also noted completion rates. People are less likely to drop out in an eight week course than they were in a 16 week course. Uh, the third one that I that I did sh was a comparison of our hybrid classes versus success, and there was no difference in those, so I didn't I didn't put those in there. They showed to be exactly the same as an online course, so there was no difference noted there. So what we have found so far is that accelerated programs have a higher success rate than full term courses, as long as the students are ready and prepared for this modality. Most classes can be offered in this format. You know, when you do a dissertation, you always get into there to your disclaimers at the end that said, wasn't this really great to talk about English 1301? Can we use this across the board? Well, no, because my background is medical. I've been a paramedic for 35 years. Um, you are not going to be able to learn how to do uh, advanced cardiac life support and save somebody uh, in, in a one hour session one day a week. I mean, so your science classes, your lab classes, your math classes um, can be very, very negatively affected if you try to push it off too much. This is why many of your medical fields, they have so many contact hours. They have so many uh, yeah, exactly. Math, 14 weeks. You know, trying to take it, I can tell you that if we offer math in, in a three or four week classes, most of those are failures unless they were math geniuses walking in there. If you're just okay with math, you're not going to do good. You, you're not going to do good. One of the problems that we had, we had um, an accounting class and the accounting class was, is typically, uh, the the then we should start preparing so yes i think we should start preparing students for this but i think many of the students are already prepared for that i think they are ready for the uh for the more accelerated method of doing this um, so we were doing accounting 2301 which is the basic accounting class and we offered it in a 16 week session and everyone did okay with it I, you know 85 percent success rate on it we offered an eight week course and it was doing okay you know probably a 75 to 80 percent success rate on that we offered it in a four-week course 
accounting in a four week course, we had about a 30% pass rate on that. And and we had the people from the university come by and visit and say, you can't do accounting in four weeks. I'm, are you kidding? You, you could stay up all day, 24 hours a day and still not catch up with accounting in, in, in a four week class. So we did take accounting and took it out of all of our four week sessions. So again, that goes back to there are some classes this is not going to work for. You, you can't do it for. But think about the classes that you can use it for. You can can do so many of your core courses at least in an eight-week session. Um, it, for me personally, on in the weekend college where I have the eight-week courses, um, we're offering geology and biology for non-science majors. I get a lot of calls that say, "Hey, or are you offering anatomy and physiology?" No, you, no. Uh, we, I, I have been a medical professional for a long time, and I wouldn't want to do A and P in, a, in an eight-week session. There's just way too much stuff to do. So, but there are so many classes you can do. You can do a music appreciation. You can do an art appreciation. You can do a speech class. You can do so. In other words, we can give almost all the core curriculum to these students uh, in an accelerated format, and now they're able to finish earlier. By the way, my doctorate was delivered in eight-week sessions. So we see that a lot of your higher education education is now moving to faster. And I really seriously think that the days of the 16 week classes are, are going away. Uh, the instructors are liking to have shorter uh, workloads. The students don't want to wait that long. They, they're impatient. And so I think we're going to see a lot more emerging of our accelerated classes. So that goes back to one of our first questions is how fast is too fast? And I think that possibly uh, three or four week classes they're great provided the student is not doing anything else but concentrating on that one class. When we ended up with these classes, we ended up finding that that our classes, let's see, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, exactly. Those the the mid semester type of courses seem to be working out the best for most of our students. Um, so what we ended up finding out about that group when we saw that we went from the from the sixty to the seventy to eighty percent success rates on those was that a student would be taking the sixteen week course plus two eight week courses plus another sixteen week course and they said oh, if I only had one more course I could be at fifteen hours that's oh look here's a monthly start and they would throw a monthly start class in there without realizing they were in a monthly start. Well, they already got four classes going on at the same time, and now they're going to do a one month intense class. And that's when we said, no, it, it's not happening. Look at what you're doing here. And that is where we end up increasing our success rate. So as long as the student is focused just on one class, they, they can be very successful in a four week course. Again, depending on the course, um, they definitely can be successful in almost any course in an eight week thing. And seriously, I think the days of our 16 week courses are, are pretty much going downhill from now on. Uh, so the, the conclusion here is, is there a perfect course modality that applies to all offerings? Well, no. You're, you're not going to find something that will fit to anybody. We're also going to have instructors who are more geared to an online environment, who are more internet suave. You're also going to have more people who really love to stand in front of the classroom and talk. So those people are going to be better at, at doing that. So we don't have the, the perfect in modality nor methodology for every course. Wouldn't it be great if we had a one size fit all? But we don't. So we will probably never know what is the best method for each course that we're going to do. Professor support is so important. And again, that goes back to um, to how much engagement that you have going on. So as technology changes, understand that our students are changing also. We had a lot of time uh, having a problem with putting some technology in the classes because we were afraid. And now we found out everybody's got internet. My daughter um, turned, how old is she now? She's all 35, yeah, 35 years old. And I remember that she had a computer in the house when she was a baby. She played Reader Rabbit on the computer. So these children have learned computers their whole life. You get an 18, 19 year old, they don't know what to do without electronics in front of their face. So let's use that to our advantage. So technology is changing, our students are changing, and the question is, are you keeping up with them?
So that is kind of the, the ultimate conclusion there. So my conclusion is wash your hands, okay? You got to wash your hands. The good example is wash your hands like you just cut up some jalapenos for your nachos and now you got to remove your contacts and all of us have done that going i'm gonna stick my finger in my eye nope 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 so um so wash your hand that's the main thing at all don't worry about waist face mask don't worry about gloves just don't touch it when i was teaching my my ems classes my paramedic classes i told them that that make sure that if it's wet and it's not yours, don't touch it, okay? And that's really the reality of it all. So here's my contact information. Please feel free to send me some information, send me questions, send me, yeah, 20 seconds or more. Now the nursing students, of course, were, uh, the nursing students were right next to us. When I was the, the dean, I had the nursing students and they have happy birthday. And I don't know if we have any nurses in our group or not. They had to sing happy birthday while washing their hands. I mean, every verse, every chorus. And they started when they got their hands underneath the water. They finished when they got done with, with happy birthday to me. Then they could take their hands out of the water. And that was their example of how long. I don't know if that's 20 seconds or not, but that was their way of doing it. There's my email address. And, and I am more than happy to have questions. Um, I believe we've recorded this. Thank you very much. Um, we recorded this, and I think that um, uh, the file is uploadable somewhere for somebody to get it if you need the, the PowerPoint. Now, um, I'm on this Apple computer, and I have no idea how to use this. So someone, if they sing it twice, okay, good. Um, if there's questions somewhere, I'm not sure how to... Answer the question. Uh, uh, and there, Go ahead. Question to the person. We, we will be sharing. We are recording. So as soon as we have the recording, we will be sharing with everyone. And we're going to post, post it in our website as well. And if you, when you manage how to send us the presentation, we can also link it to the, to the, well, the same uh, place. We're going to put the video if you want. Okay. okay. So everybody can have it. You can send it in PDF format, so it, it could probably be less okay. uh, uh, not that heavy, so it can pass easily through e email, okay? okay? Any questions? I will, I will get Dr. Morales to make sure it converted and send it over and that, so we'll have it in the no PDF problem. format, okay? No, Rosh, we have plenty of time. Everybody's from, I don't know, there. I know you're going to close soon, right? Uh, in Puerto Rico, we already are. Uh, close uh, since last uh, Sunday. So uh, thank you to everyone who connect. I know we have a lot of people from Puerto Rico, but also from our member institutions in United States, including your institution in Tarrant. Uh, and again, thank you very much for your time. And we hope that we get through this together, uh, all following the instructions. And thank you for the last <laughs> slide. Was your hand is very important. <laughs> and please stay tuned for the next webinars that we're going to be offering during this semester. And thank you so much, David. Congratulations again on your doctor degree. You, and almost you. completing mine. So I guess uh, we need to celebrate then. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, uh, I'm the example that you're never too old, okay? You, you <laughs> keep, you know, keep going. So you got Definitely. it. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Any questions? No? You can put the questions on the chat or you can activate uh, your microphone if you want. No? Okay. But I think we, your presentation was, was clear enough and we re really enjoy it. Very interesting findings. Thank you for sharing and have a wonderful weekend uh, in your home doing whatever <laughs> you may want to get <laughs> entertain yourself. So thank you and take care, everyone. Please stay safe. Thank you very much. Okay, have a good bye -bye. day. Bye. -bye.